our team of ASS Science Foundation will be talking about analytical techniques which is the next topic of our discussion so as you can see mentioned in our literature the classical methods for analytical techniques which are gravimetric method calorimetric method and volumetric method these methods are chemistry based methods the disadvantage with these methods are that it fails to identify or quantify the toxic metals pesticides or trace metals on the basis of physical and chemical property the instrumental techniques have been designed with the help of these techniques we can identify pollutant at level or in the range of ppm or ppp level remind this thing that ppm is nothing but milligram per liter and ppp is nothing but microgram per liter now we will be talking about spectrochemical methods where we will be dealing specifically with spectrophotometry double as which is atomic absorption spectrophotometry basically used for heavy metals and then flame photometry flame photometry is basically used for analyzing group 1 and group 2 elements which are having low ionization energy such as lithium sodium potassium so as shown in the picture we have shown the spectrum of electromagnetic radiations so as you see when we go from cosmic rays to gamma rays to x rays ultraviolet visible infrared microwaves radio waves as we move from radio waves towards cosmic rays the frequency of the radiation green hence the energy will also increase if we do another way around like we move from cosmic rays towards the radio waves then the wavelength will increase and the energy will decrease all of us know that visible light ranges in the range of 400 to 700 nanometer which is also called as bar region of the visible spectrum means photosynthetically active radiations now we have mentioned that where the ultraviolet light is present in the spectrum so all of you know that uva ranges from 320 to 400 nanometer uvb ranges from 280 to 320 nanometer and you will see ranges from some of the books write it as like 100 to 280 nanometer for uvc or less than 280 nanometer so there are three parameter which characterize a wave particularly basically lambda which is the wavelength of radiation measured in meter or centimeter then wave number which is nothing but 1 by lambda and frequency which having si units of hertz all of you might be familiar with the relationship that speed is equal to frequency into wavelength and wave number is equal to 1 upon lambda sorry electromagnetic waves or radiation is described in terms of wavelength lambda wave number nu bar and frequency nu where we can understand that the velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength where c the velocity of light which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second followed by planck's relationship or planck's formula which is e is equal to h nu where e is the energy of photon as is planck's constant which stand for 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second and nu is the frequency of radiation basically the spectrum of electromagnetic radiations are of two type one is called as absorption spectrum and other one is called as emission spectrum so we have shown a diagram in the case of absorption spectrum we have a radiation source which is there and we have a sample which absorbs certain amount of radiations and some amount is passed on which is detected by the help of spectrophotometer so when we talk about emission spectrum the sample itself is thermally or electrically charged then it will radiate some amount of electromagnetic radiations in the case of emission spectrum and this could be thermally or electrically charged the sample and then it emits radiations which is detected by spectrophotometer 
and when electromagnetic radiation of different wavelengths passes through a sample one after another some wavelength absorb more effectively than others another wavelength may not be absorbed at all because they are specific towards a particular wavelength and specifically where we are talking about absorption spectra the spectrum is characteristics of substance concentration the maximum absorption by the sample always occur at a fixed wavelength which is called as lambda max so this was all about absorption spectra and if we talk about emission spectrum when the sample is excited thermally or electronically then more intense radiation at a fixed wavelength or certain wavelength is the indication of substance concern means it will emit certain amount of radiations the main objective if we talk about for analytical technique is first to identify the element of metals or the element of interest which is you can call as qualitative analysis and the other one aim is to quantify or identify the component which you called as a quantitative analysis so both the ways it is there now we will be first dealing about spectrophotometry so it is mainly based on the fact that the compound absorb light radiation at a specific wavelength means each compound have a certain lambda max spectrophotometry is mainly based on lambert beer law which was given by two signs lambert and beer so here you can see that we have a cubit which is having a length l and the concentration concentration of the solution which is taken inside the cubit is c the intensity of the incident radiation is i naught and the intensity of the transmitted radiation or exiting light is i so i naught here is the intensity of light entering or the incident radiation i is the light exiting or the transmitted radiation l is the length of the path of the cubit and cubit could be of glass or quartz the absorb the absorbance or optical density and transmission or transmittance can be measured through a light can be through light and can be calculated by measuring the light intensity at entering and exiting of the sample so absorbance is nothing it's measured by the ratio of radiation falling upon a sample and the radiation transmitted through a sample or what we call in general word is log base 10 i naught by i which is also called as absorbance or absorbance or what we call as optical density od right where i naught is the intensity of the incident radiation i is the intensity of transmitted radiation here we can see that absorbance which is a is directly proportional to l which is the length of the cubit or the light path followed and absorbance is also directly proportional to the concentration of the substance inside the cubit and hence we can correlate absorbance length of the cubit and the concentration of the substance we are measuring as absorbance is equal to k into c into l where k is the molar extension coefficient or k is also called as molar absorptivity so absorbance a is equal to log base 10 i naught by i and if we see like this that can be also written as absorbance is equal to kcl is equal to log of i naught by i and this i naught by i can be also equated to 10 to the power kcl or i by i naught if we invert these terms then it will be transmittance means the intensity of the final radiation to the initial radiation is also called as transmittance is equal to 10 to the power minus kcl now moving a bit ahead if we observe a graph between absorbance and concentration so you can see a straight line between both of them so it means absorbance is directly proportional to concentration similarly if we plot on y axis the transmittance and on the x axis the concentration you will see a rectangular hyperbola which shows that transmittance and concentration are inversely related to each other we can also observe from these graph that with increase in concentration the absorbance also increase linearly and with increase in concentration that transmittance decrease exponentially 
and the instrument for spectrophotometry now we will be studying so we have a source light source which is a stable radiant energy source then we have a monochromator monochromator basically used to convert the light into a monochromatic light which is a single wavelength light then we have a photo detector finally we have a uh, measurable absorbance so we have the following part in spectrophotometer light or radiation energy source then we have a monochromator monochromator basically act as a wavelength selector to isolate the desired wavelength from the source of radiation then we have a transparent container which is called as qubit could be made up of could be made up of quartz or silica then we have detector or radiant detector which is sort of photo tube which convert radiation energy into measurable signals which are shown on the monitor so qubit it must be fabricated from the material which is transparent radiation in spectral region of the interest it made up of quartz so whenever we have to do spectrophotometry for uv radiation we generally use quartz qubits because glass absorb ultraviolet radiation so that's why in case of ultraviolet radiation we use quartz qubit or fused silica and silicate glass for visible light and the calculations are done according to the equation that y is equal to m